70 years ago, a small group of British businessmen traveled to China to unlock opportunities between the two countries. They became known as the icebreakers. Meet the bridge builders, the individuals who dare to think beyond the horizon and open up our world. My name is Jerry Gray. I am a British-born citizen and I lived in Australia for a short while. But in 2004, about 18 years ago, I came to live in China, in Zhongshan, Guangdong. My idea was to travel the world with this portable skill of teaching English. And my first job was in China. That was in 2004 and I never left. <laughs> I decided that I was going to stay in Zhongshan and I decided to go looking for a job and uh, I went to a language center and met the manager there and that's Anne. <laughs> yes. She was my boss. Oh, I see. Still is. <laughs> I found that a uh, foreigner or Western man is more direct to express their, their feelings, their love. We are obviously from different cultures but because both of us have traveled widely, both of us have experience of the other culture, I don't think it's such a, a broad difference. There, there, was no, there was a bridge already there before we ever met each other. We, we were comfortable with each other's cultures before. My wife and I got involved in charity work in 2005. Our charity basically now is helping the disabled people in Zhongshan. And the government does help disabled people, but we can add to that. Disabled people didn't get much attention from mm. society, so we decided to yeah, maybe focus on disabled people. Myself and another foreign friend, an Irish guy, decided to ride to Xinjiang. When I decided to do this bike ride, I thought it might be an idea to link the two together. And it created a bit of publicity, it generated a lot of interest. So we basically traveled north from Guangdong into Hunan, into Hubei, into Shanxi, Gansu, Ningxia, and then across to Xinjiang. I had a feeling that I hadn't completed a journey and I wanted to ride from Urumuchi back to Zhongshan. And Anne kind of encouraged me to do it, so I, we kind of got to the point where if I'm going to do it, let's do it together. We flew to Urumuchi, had the bikes shipped to Urumuchi and then rode home. So that's a reversal of my first ride. So again, we touched the same provinces and regions. It kind of snowballed, it rolled and got bigger and bigger and uh, we had Zhongshan television uh, covering us every day. They would call me in the afternoon and say, where are you now? How far have you come? When we got back, we had a, a function, an event, and that raised a lot of money. Your walk is even yeah. more, yeah. Me and another uh, American girl, we uh, walked from Zhongshan to Beijing four and a half months, and uh, about 2,500 k's, yeah. kilometers. We mostly just stay in cheap hotels camp a few times in mountain but safe quite safe I didn't feel any we didn't meet any like um, dangerous situations no not at all we raise funds so we can donate and we focus very much on the disabled community here in Zhongshan uh, we used to try and help people who were poor and we found that the government are doing that pretty well now anyway so we tend to focus more on disabilities and helping disabilities to become more assimilated in community. Mm. And you wouldn't see disabled people, now you do. And that's the beauty of how China is changing. And I, I'd like to think we had something to do with that by, by raising attention mm. more than raising the money. So far, if we count it from 2005 to now, it's more than three million. We collect the money but we donated it to, you know, to An use organization it, to uses it. use it, yeah. The reason I started blogging uh, was because we were locked down and I thought, well, I'll, I'll share China. I'll share my experiences of China and that's how it happened. I started posting photographs and stories linked to the photographs. And then I started writing articles about it. From 2015 uh, to 2020, my Twitter site had two followers and one tweet, or maybe two tweets. And now it's, uh, it's just a shade short of 45,000 followers. 
I've seen lots of changes in China. When I first came here, it was almost impossible, for example, to get a coffee. And I, I'm a coffee addict. <laughs> Pretty much everything that I, I used to miss, I can now find here. If you want to find out what's happening in China, ask people who are in China with poverty alleviation, um, rural revitalization, incredible infrastructure in the last five years. We've got bridges to Hong Kong. We've got high-speed trains. All of this is in the last five to 10 years. So anyone who was here in the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, the China they knew is not the China of today. And that's the most important thing that I can put across. Westerners, they don't understand China. So I think better for them to come over and look around and have their own experience in China. I've ridden across China from north to south, from east to west, and from west to east. So I've done probably 30, maybe 35,000 kilometers on a bike in China. So I get to know the place pretty well.